Hi everybody. Hello, hello. It's Friday and it's Facebook Live time in the in my bariatric community. So today the topic is going to be keto snacks are bad for keto and lowering insulin levels equals weight loss. That's a really big, cool topic. Sandra, right on. Here you are. Keto snacks are bad for you and lowering insulin levels equals weight loss. That's the topic today. And everybody wants to know, um, why do you, everybody wants to lower their carbohydrate intake, but why do you wanna lower your carbohydrate intake? What's the deal? I really want to explain it because everybody's carb crazed, right? But why are we trying to lower our carbohydrate um, intake? And if you already know why, I'm going to just give you a refresher. We're going to remind ourselves why we're trying to lower carbs all the time. Megan, Susan, Stephanie, Crystal, Jeff. Hey guys, guess what? It's the second week in February. It's time to start the challenge, the second week in February challenge, which is seven hours feeding and 17 hours fasting. I don't know if you tried last week the 16-8 fasting. I hope you did. Um, but if you didn't uh, try it, join us this week because we're doing 717, so 17 hours of, of uh, fasting and seven hours of feeding. That's our intermittent fasting challenge this week. Eric, Lucy, Mike, Linda Newman. Okay guys, so once again, I'm gonna do a draw for free vitamins at the end of the video. If you're, if you're not already entered, put me and I'll put you in the, um, the draw for next week if you're not already in for this week. You guys know I'm a huge fan of ketogenic lifestyle and uh, how I also endorse intermittent fasting, but for clients that are further into their journey, like um, Linda, for example, and for Kim, for example, and for Lacey, for example, you guys are further into your, exactly Kim, you guys are further into your, your, um, your journey right now. So intermittent fasting is something I, guys, I really want you guys to give a good try to. There you go, me, 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 exactly. Um, before we get into the topic of keto snacks are bad for you, um, and um, why to reduce the carbohydrate load. I need to introduce myself because people who don't know me are gonna be wondering, who is this funny person talking? Um, I'm Sherry Burke, registered holistic nutritionist. I specialize in bariatric nutrition and I'm a surgery coordinator at the Obesity Goodbye Center Mexico. So today we are going to uh, meet Steve. Hey Steve, okay. You guys join in, this is what Facebook Live's about. If you have questions about carbohydrates or questions about snacking, um, this is a place to do it. Let's get into it. Okay, I titled the video, Keto Snacks Are Bad For You, to grab your attention, but also because it's important that we discuss some of the ingredients that are in these snacks today and what makes them so bad. I might not be talking about the boiled egg or the almonds, right? But um, keto's become so popular that there are all kinds of manufactured snack foods that are coming onto the market each and every day. And companies are trying to take advantage of us and they're producing these lucrative prepackaged snacks. I'm going to jump on my, my soapbox here. They slap the word keto on it and then they, uh, they hope that we're going to buy it and be totally blind about it just because it says keto, right? It's not fair. Um, hey, Sarah, Mary. Steve says he's down to 200 pounds. Way to go, Steve. Where, what was your starting weight? I can't remember. Um, Okay, I'm going to jump on my sauce box because I had this happen to me uh, at Domino's recently. Do you guys remember when they came out with the cauliflower pizza crust? Oh my God, I was so excited. Jerry says she feels like she smacked too much. We all, exactly. Let's get into it, Jerry. You guys know how much I love pizza, right? I'm always talking about pizza on Facebook, right? Um, so when Domino's came out and they said they have this great uh, new cauliflower crust, what did I think? The first thing I thought was that great no carb pizza. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Or low carb pizza crust, right? This is gonna be great. So I jumped into line the first day it came out and I ordered my pizza and then I asked them for the nutritional breakdown of the ingredients in the cauliflower crust. You know what? The, the top ingredients were not cauliflower. It was tapioca starch and uh, rice flour. The carbohydrate load was the same as it was in the regular pizza crust. I mean, boo, I almost cried. Uh, Steve says um, you started at 346. That's 150 pounds down. Steve Kentrell, way to go. Good for you. Yeah, Megan, carbs out the rear. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so this is like one of those, those stories that now I, I mean, I've always looked at labels, but now I really check out those labels because it really irritated me 
that you you said cauliflower crust and I automatically assumed it was low carb pizza crust. So now I make my pizza crust by myself, right? I use almond flour, I just skip the crust altogether and just go for the toppings. Yeah, it's, it's sad, isn't it, Kim? It's disappointing, she says. I absolutely agree. Okay, so there's a few ingredients I'm gonna talk about today. It's five things I'm gonna talk about. There's a lot of ingredients that we really should be avoiding, but um, Nikki, Courtney, hey guys, Cindy, um, but I'm going to mention five because it's just, it gets overwhelming. I'm going to tell you why to, to also avoid these five ingredients when you're out there looking for keto snacks um, or, or any kind of foods, actually. Um, corn fiber, maltodextrin, dextrin, um, soy protein isolates, and tapioca starch. That was in my pizza crust. That's just the five I'm going to talk about today. Hey, Cindy. Okay, corn fiber. Corn fiber gives you tons of gas and it's genetically modified GMO. So do we really want to be eating corn fiber? Okay, no. Maltodextrin, they call this keto friendly. I'm totally surprised it shouldn't be keto friendly at all. It's over 100 on the glycemic index. It turns into sugar faster than sugar turns into sugar. How can that be keto friendly? Dextrin, um, it's a synthetic sugar and super high on the glycemic index. Tapioca starch raises insulin levels through the, through the sky and soy protein isolates. Genetically modified, it's a frankenfood, it's not even a food. There we go. So that's why we should be avoiding those foods. Now why should we avoid, hey Mary, why should we avoid um, snacking in general? Okay, so we're going to avoid snacking because what's, it's going to be beneficial about insulin levels. So. If you go out there today or you go on Amazon or you go on any kind of uh, blog that they're promoting uh, ketogenic friendly foods, they're going to have keto chocolate bars, keto cookies, keto snacks, keto crackers, keto everything, right? But let's talk about why it's beneficial to lower your carbs and then lower your snacks. So we're going to lower our, hey, Tamika, Jennifer and Sarah, we're going to lower our carbs because that's going to lower our insulin levels. Insulin is the hormone that's going to block and nullify fat burning. That's it. That's why we're trying to avoid carbohydrates. But there's another additional piece of information that a lot of us don't know and don't understand. And that is there's other factors that stimulate insulin secretion. Gastrointestinal hormones almost double the insulin secretion after a meal or a snack. Oops. What's the snack? A snack, the definition of a snack is a small amount of food eaten between a meal, right? So simply, every time that you eat, you trigger insulin and you don't want to have these frequent meals because you're going to raise insulin all day long and that's going to keep you from seeing the benefit of a ketogenic lifestyle. And that's why we're trying to avoid snacking. That's why we're getting more involved now in the intermittent fasting as well, right? The more the more time that goes by, the more we learn about the nutrition, new nutritional science coming out and the smarter we're getting and bravo for all of us, right? Tamiko, Jennifer, Sarah, Tammy, Kelly. Hey guys. So if you decide that you want to consume these keto snacks that you're buying on Amazon or buying at these keto friendly places, consume them as part of your meal. Um, don't consume them as just a snack, okay? Because that's gonna help to control the blood sugar surge and the insulin surge as well. Now the snacks that I'm mostly talking about in this video and I'm ranting about right now are the pre-packaged ketogenic snacks that we're buying. It's not so much about the boiled eggs and the almonds. But remember though, every time you eat, you raise insulin level. Insulin is that hormone that nullifies fat burning and that's the simple way of putting it. So if you're having a regain, hey Tanya, if the scale is stuck, um, eat high quality food less frequently. That's it. Eat high quality food less frequently. And you're going to see how the scale moves again. One more time, if you're having a regain or the scale is stuck, eat high quality food less frequently and the scale is going to move again. Amanda, Kim, should we be going at least three hours between eating to not be considered snacking. Yes, ma'am. You got it. Grazing is out. Eating six small meals a day is out. I prefer that you eat until you're full, until you're full. Because bariatric clients 
um, have a habit of grazing and never really feeling full. I want you to feel satisfied and feel full, like you can't eat anymore, okay? And then hold off before you eat again. Now, if you're doing the intermittent fasting and you have an eight hour window, that's plenty of time to get your food in. As long as you're eating food that's not gonna raise your blood sugar, raise your insulin levels, you're gonna feel less hungry, you're gonna feel more satisfied. Hey, Nels. So that's where, any question guys? Oh, Tanya Riley, I still catch myself overeating. Yeah, you know what, we all do. We need to just slow down and just think and, and just stop and try to remove all the distractions when you're eating, right? Chew, eat, enjoy, savor, um, and then and, and don't, don't watch TV or don't read or don't scroll through Facebook at the same time, right? What is considered high quality food? Tammy, good question. High quality food. So real food. Food that comes from nature. Food that you know where it comes from. Um, Pre-packaged foods, um, probably you shouldn't be eating them. Things when you read the labels and you don't know what's, what is that food inside. What is a soy protein isolate? Heck, what is maltodextrin and dextrin and tapioca um, starch? Boo, that's not real food, right? Stay on the outside of the supermarket. Um, Taylor, hey Taylor, all the way from Alaska, I see you there. Megan, not too sure I want to lose much more. Great, Megan, so if, you, if you're at your point of maintenance, reach out to me. I can give you some different ways where you can go into maintenance. You can maintain, not continue losing. Um, working with super high quality food, high quality food, real food. Oh, thanks, Kim. Thanks very much. Steve Cantrell says, I'm still at three to five bites anymore. I can't keep it down. Yes, yeah, Steve, but you're recently newly operated as well right now. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try chewing just a little bit more, slowing down just a little bit more to see if you can just get one more bite in. Try that. Megan too, yeah, recently operated. It gets easier. Asked here to, uh, to um, Kim or asked here to Nels, for example, who's had surgery and has been operated for a while now, how it gets easier as the time goes on and you have less restriction as the time goes on. And that's where it gets really important to use all of these tools. Steve Kentrell, live on protein shakes and real thin sliced jerky. Yeah, Steve, let's reach out. I'm gonna send you a link. I want you to make an appointment with me and I want to talk about your diet and how we can make some improvements, right? How we can get some more food into the diet. Tanya, you want the honeymoon stage back? We all want that honeymoon stage back. We do. So now it's, it, the struggle is real, right? It's real. Um, this is where we need to really focus on, on high quality food and to get rid of the carbohydrates so that we feel better and more stable all day long. Oh, Maria, oh, thanks, you like the hair, thanks. Yeah, it's my natural curls. I've been burning the heck out of them. I'm gonna let them go, it's an experiment. Steve, um, I do till it's liquid. Okay, good, okay. Well, let's, let's touch base, Steve. You and I, we're gonna touch base now. I'm gonna reach out to you shortly and we're going to, um, oh, let's, let's give away some free vitamins, right? Okay, here we go, big bowl. Two winners this week, here we go. Oh, I just dropped three names on the floor. Oops, I hope it wasn't yours. Okay, here we go. Shelly. Will you win some vitamins? Shelly Lynn Cass Tomlin. There you go. I'll be sending these out to you. And one more. Hey, Don. <clears throat> Who's this? Sharon Van Hopson. Yay, Sharon, you won. I wrote that name down. Sharon Van Hopson. Okay, perfect. You guys, I'm going to reach out to you after the video is over. Um, yeah, you guys, I see you chatting about the challenge it is because you're no longer surgery newbies. We complain when we're surgery newbies because we can't fit food in like Steve's doing now. We complain when we're veterans because we can fit too much food in. It's finding that fine balance. And really, folks, it's really about eating really high quality, natural, good food and not eating um, Franken foods, right? Okay, guys, so I hope that helps you explain uh, why you want to keep your insulin levels low and how that enables you to lose weight. And I hope it helps to explain why we want to minimize snacking and when we're trying to, um, when you're trying to lose weight. So once again, I'm going to sign off shortly. Um, it's like I say, next week I'll be back again with another topic. We're going to continue along the lines of ketogenic bariatric lifestyle. We're going to continue along the lines of the intermittent fasting um, if you're afraid of the word keto, then just think low carb, low refined processed carbohydrates, okay? Don't get too caught up on that word keto. Um, 
because there's really good keto and there's really crappy keto also, okay? Guys, any other questions? Amber, Tamiku. Okay guys, so if you have questions, I'm gonna be here for the next hour or two to answer any questions. Uh, so don't be shy, reach out to me. Send you guys a big hug and I'll talk to you guys soon. Oh, Megan, did you enjoy the halftime show of the Super Bowl? Yeah, who doesn't like them? Some Adam Levine, yeah? <laughs> Bye, Megan. See you guys later. Bye.